he will always call in and specifically ask right for ask for male agents so one of my very close colleague right he also kena this guy the guy went to pinch his butt eh Hi, I'm Augustine. And I'm Luis. Today we're going to play Spill It, where we'll spill the tea on what it's like being an insurance agent in Singapore. I'm an insurance agent for seven coming eight years now. And I chanced upon a job when I really wanted to get my own savings plan. I asked my insurance agent about the job and here I am. I'm an insurance agent of more than 10 years. I chanced upon this career and during my uni days when I was actually looking for sponsors for my CCA group. So instead of looking out for sponsors, right, they ended up looking out for me as an associate. To start the game, each player will draw five question cards from the deck. Players will then take turns choosing a question card from the hand to ask the opponent. Players will also be given three action cards each, where they can skip, switch or spill at any point of time. For skip, you skip the question. Switch, get your opponent to answer instead. And for spill, you get to ask a follow-up question. What's the secret about buying insurance that only insurance agents would know? I mean, I, I don't know how many of the uh, agents or, you know, FAs out there actually tell this to their clients. La. Most times, you realise that people would sell the longest policy term possible. You know why? Because, right, uh, the commissions for policy that is extremely long, it's actually the highest. So, meaning to say, if you get, if you pay more commission to your insurance agents, right, your policy value actually is lower. Share with us some misconception people have about our profession. The biggest misconception is that we go out there to hunt for anything and everything and anything that moves, we try to close. It's, it's not true. La. Like sometimes the client can't tell me something, I say, okay, it's okay, I don't want to work with you also. I mean, whatever Augustine shared, right, uh, that's because you have reached a certain level. La. At the start, right, hey, you are streams, you know what, anybody that shows any buying signal, right, what, immediately you, you don't care how rude or how rich this person or how poor this person is, as long as this person, right, can give you something, right, you just take it. But then after that, you realise that, hey, after a while, you know, these people, they, they pay you peanuts, but they expect a lot out of you. And you'll be thinking, uh, is it worth it or not? What is the most number of times you were rejected in a day? Back then when I was uh, young and dangerous. Uh, you call anyone and you tell them, oh hey, you know what? You know, I have a lengthy conversation and then after that, the most important, whatever you tell them in front, don't matter. What, the one particular sentence that matters is, I joined this company as an insurance agent. Oh, okay, I'm not free already. So that's the reaction. Yeah. At the start, I think maybe if you're calling, then you can easily say uh, 50 to 60% of the people that you call. Uh. Share a client from hell story that you will never forget. When I was younger, gullible, I was afraid. I was like 24 when I started. Very afraid of very successful people. You drive to the house, uh, the gate bigger than your life on is that big. You go down there, you go inside for like five, six sessions, right? All I did was open his letters and read to him. Any letter, just sit there while you're doing it. Say, hey, uh, hey, he got this letter. You help me see if uh, any other insurance company got sent me anything. Help me summarize. I open his all the bills and just like literally sorting his mail out. La. What broke the camel's back when I said I, I stopped this? When I arrived earlier, he told me, hey, you like dogs, right? Hey, can you help me walk my dogs because I'm back later? They feel like they own you. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Wow, the feeling is like you're like dog. Eh? I got one story to spill, actually quite interesting because as Augustine was talking about, this guy, uh, he's very he's very famous in the company one because right, he will always call in and specifically right ask for male agents. So I happened to answer one of his call and then I called him back, right? He sounds like exactly okay. Hello. Uh uh hi, uh, my name is Mr. What? I would like to have a retirement plan. Uh. You sound very nice leh. Uh, how old are you ah? Uh? Are you married or not? So okay fine, then I went on to meet him like meet him in person. What I tell you ah, uh, you know what you wore or not? You wore like wow, hot pants or tight shirt or calm then you walk like that one eh. Then he asked me, Hey Louisa, tomorrow is my birthday leh. Actually my house is opposite leh. Do you want to come my house or not? Ah? Wow, red flag all over, no, ding 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 ding. Then every other day, he'll call and harass you. Eh. That was last year, COVID period. So I, wow, I cannot, cannot. Because, you know, fine, I'm running out of excuse to not meet him. So I replied, you know, what wow, ultimatum, eh. I'm actually done with COVID. Wow, that was the best, eh. Then after he said, oh, okay, okay, uh, never mind, I'll get well soon. After that, then he stopped calling me. So one of my very close colleague, right, he also kena this guy. The guy went to pinch his butt, eh. What's the highest commission you have ever earned from selling a policy? I mean, 10 years in the industry, I've always been working with um, 
middle to lower income families la. I mean this is my this is my target audience la. so so far I think in terms of like uh, premium I mean commission sizes right one policy the max I earned was about 10 to fifteen thousand dollars I just to step in now uh, we don't earn commissions forever uh. averagely about six years some are perpetual but on a low word which you can think about it if it's a $20 plan you earn 30% uh. averagely your commissions for accident plan is about 30% that's like Six dollars. But then, like you see, if somebody falls down, you're gonna do the claims, the paperwork, you take a cab, you buy a coffee, you buy them uh, well wishes, you take care of them. Gone already. <laughs> Still to play tax after that. True or false? MDRT is outdated and gives you a fixed sense of achievement. What? True. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you got a, there are three ways to hit. Right? Number one is your income. But for income, you gotta be, uh, you have to hit it once, like either by first year commission, or the amount of premiums you have collected. It used to be the top 1% of the world. The whole world you rank within the top 1% of, of financial planners. La. But now it's the top 5 or top 8%. La. It's a bit like, you know, I always say this, like, you know, last time, right, when you're a degree holder and everybody else is only a diploma holder, right? So degree holder people are like, wow, hey, you got a degree. So right now, right, you know, you're like MDRT. Everybody else is MDRT. So you be like, okay, so MDRT becomes the social norm. True or false? Good looking insurance agents earn more. I mean, it's not that because we both of us are good looking and we earn more. No, no, it's nothing to do with that. But I have a lot of male friends, uh, I tell you honestly speaking. They bought something from roadshows. When I ask them, right, hey, what you buy? They all have uh, the, a common thing. I don't know. I was only looking at the girl. But I think right now, people move away from looks. Uh. I mean, a lot of um, industry top salesperson are not as pleasant looking as we think they are. What are some of the unspoken rules in the industry? I mean, to me, don't poach other agents. Never go and chat people's clients nah. Don't go behind and say, hey, you know, don't put people down to, to just to get a case. I mean, two hundred dollars to sell your your values and ethics. I I I I, I disagree lah. What is the most expensive gift or token you have bought to lure potential clients to your booth? I learned this from my friend. They say there are three people, or I don't know how many kind of character in a roadshow lah. So the first one right is those people that are very aggressive and very hungry and they'll go around and get people to do the surveys or whatever lah. Then the second group of people right, they um they will hunt like they will see. Okay, so let, let, maybe let's say I'm 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 very comfortable with working with aunties. I only target aunties. So these are the group of people that are they have a targeted audience, so they know who they want to go out for. Then the third kind of people, right, is people that are tope kong. Tope kong is people just stand inside the booth and then like that. <laughs> I'm that kind. Of. If you ask me what is the most expensive gift that I've given, right, a Mont Blanc pen to one of my clients. I mean, um, he's my client. I actually appreciate him a lot because he supported me since day one. So there was one year I actually bought him a Mont Blanc pen. Um, the cost was about very close to $500. I have lost a bunch of friends because I tried to sell them insurance, true or false? Uh, yes, in a very simplistic term. Actually, when I look back, they weren't really my friends. Uh. It's like acquaintances, lah, correct or not? Like, give them a call, you be frank with them, then suddenly it goes, goes you. Actually, you think about it, even if you're not in this industry, people drift. Uh. It's just that this job quickens that process. <laughs> you out all your funny friends mm. that you don't need. Uh. What are some questions to ask your insurance agents to test if he or she knows their stuff? So you, normally your insurance agents will show you a lot of documents. Uh, and one of them is this thing called a uh, benefit illustration and product summary. In this document, right, um, there are a few things inside. Uh, you should ask your agent, right, what is the distribution cost for? Uh, so his explanation, right, will tell you whether or not uh, he knows his stuff. You, you hit that point, you can smell the fear or the confidence. True or false? I have considered or actually bought insurance from a different company. True, I have. I think if you go and understand all the products, some companies have small little gaps to cover very specific traits or, or clientele that they buy. La. But the only thing I've bought and I encourage everybody to buy is the, the army one. Just to bump it up. It's cheap, it's good. It does it's, it does its job. Like that, you can buy Cashew Life. Cashew from here. I bought it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another company. I bought another company. Okay, I got one last one, which is ask anything you want. What is one thing you always wanted to tell difficult client? Like inside, you know, you smile, smile, but behind <laughs> you want to... In my organization, right, uh, I actually get um, what I call often clients. Often clients means right clients whose agents have either left the industry or they were very pissed off with, the, with their agents. Uh. So I was given this client. Uh. And then uh, when I call the client, um, she never pick up. 
Then that one Christmas, right, she texted me, you know, wow, one lunch, WhatsApp me one, one large chunk of message, eh. Then there was one particular paragraph, right, that, wow, really made me see bit. All you insurance agents, uh, he well, generalized that all you insurance agents only know how to sell. When I need something, right, all run away. Then I'm like, wow, yeah, then poor thing, uh, I call you, don't pick up. Then after that, right, now they send me this kind of Christmas, eh. Then all she wanted, right, was to update her name. Just just now, just before I came, right? Just before I came, just now I got one client call me. Uh Louisa, what is my password, ah? Uh? I say, uh sir, sir, the password right is actually written in the email. Got me, got me! Then I say, okay, never mind. You can you uh take a photo, take a screenshot. He took photo of the the, the box that's asking him for his password. <sighs> how much I earn? You know how much I earn? <laughs> $4.50! So how did your family rep you told them that I want to be engineering? So there was one day right, I went home and I tell my mother, uh, my parents, uh, I tell them, hey come sit down, I'm going to tell you all something. So I told them, uh, you know what, uh, I'm going to join uh, this company as an insurance agent. Then my mother went, you eager, because my sister is in the industry also. So I told my mother, why don't you give me two years, if I cannot, if I cannot make a name out of, my, out of this job, or you know, I cannot make a name for myself, right? Then I'll quit, then I'll come and help you in your, in your, in your store. So of course, both of them back then were hawkers. 10 years ago and I never looked back since. My mom was, was basically telling me, I mean, you got a degree already now, then what are you going to do about it? Instead, you go and sell insurance, you waste that 20000 getting a degree for nothing. How to be successful? One tip for them. If I can tell you one tip is, your boss must be able to challenge you during the first few sit-downs. If you don't feel challenged by this person, You'll never make it one. What's scary is that you don't want to work. You don't even want to try. So without hard work, there's no success. Ah. I think whatever you do, um, hard work, perseverance, and uh, don't be a <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's some it all. Ah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Spill It. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.